Hi, and today is going to be a pretty big video. Um, welcome to Medical Medicine Boys, and we're going to be talking about pulmonary embolism. So, basically, an embolus, which is spelled as E-M-B-O-L-U-S, is usually a blood clot, um, thrombus, but may also be fat, amniotic fluid, bone marrow, a tumor fragment, or an air bubble that travels through the bloodstream until it blocks a blood vessel. Pulmonary embolism is the sudden blocking of an artery of the lung, mainly uh, the pulmonary artery, by an embolus. Usually, unobstructed arteries can send enough blood to the affected part of the lung to prevent tissue death. However, when very large vessels are blocked, um, the basically when they are blocked, or the person has a pre-existing uh, lung disease, the amount of blood supplied may be insufficient to prevent uh, tissue death. About 10% of people with pulmonary embolism suffer some lung tissue death, called pulmonary infraction. If the body breaks up small clots quickly, damage, damage is mainly kept to a minimum. Uh, largely clots take much longer to disintegrate, so more damage is done. Large clots may cause sudden death. Now the causes, so we'll talk a little bit about the causes now. So the, the most common type of pulmonary embolus is a blood clot, usually one that begins in a leg or pelvic vein. Blood clots tend to form when the blood is flowing slowly or not at all, as may occur in the leg veins when a person stays in one position for a long time. When the person starts moving again, the clot can break loose. Far less often, clots uh, begin in the veins of the arms or in the right side of the heart. Once a clot in a vein breaks free to the bloodstream, it usually travels to the lungs. Another type of embolus may form uh, from fat that escapes into the blood uh, from the bone marrow when a bone is fractured. Let's go move on to the symptoms. Now, small emboli may not cause any symptoms, but most cause shortness of breath. This may be the only symptom, especially if infraction doesn't develop. Often the breathing is very rapid, and the person may feel anxious or restless and appear to have an anxiety attack. Sharp pain may be, de may be felt in the chest uh, near the torso area, especially when the person breathes deeply. The pain is called pleuritic chest pain. In some people, the first symptoms may be lightheadedness, fainting, or convulsions. These symptoms usually result from a sudden decrease in the heart's ability to deliver enough well-oxygenated blood to the brain and other organs. Irregular heartbeats may also occur. People with an occlusion or a blockage of one or more large vessels of the lungs may have a blue skin color, a cyanosis, C-Y-A-N-O-S-I-S, -S, and can die suddenly. Pulmonary infraction um, produces coughing, blood stains, uh, um, sputum, sharply chest pain or breathing and fever. The symptoms of pulmonary embolism usually develop abruptly, whereas the symptoms of pulmonary infraction develop over a period of hours. Symptoms of infraction of 10 last, last several days, um, but usually become milder every day. And people who have recurring episodes with small pulmonary emboli symptoms, swell, uh, such as chronic shortness of breath, swelling of ankles or leg, and weakness tend to develop progressively over weeks, months, or even years. Now the diagnosis. Now a doctor suspects pulmonary embolism based on a person's symptoms and uh, predisposing factors. However, um, certain procedures are often needed to confirm the diagnosis. A chest x-ray may reveal subtle 
changes in the blood vessel patterns uh, after embolism and signs of pulmonary infraction. However, chest x-rays are often are normal and even when they are abnormal, they rarely confer pulmonary embolism. An electrocardiogram may show abnormalities, but often they're uh, transient and can only support the possibly the possibility of pulmonary embolism. A pulmonary audiography is the most accurate means of diagnosing pulmonary, pulmonary embolism, but it poses some risks. Uh, risk and is more uncomfortable than other tests. A dye that can be seen on X-rays is it is uh, injected um, into the artery into an artery and flows into the arteries of the lung. Let's go now to the treatment of pulmonary embolism. The treatment begins with the ad ad administration of oxygen and if necessary analgesics anti um, coagulants such as heparin and are given to prevent existing blood clots from enlarging and additional clots from forming the heparin spelled as h-e-p-a-r-i-n is given intravenously to achieve a rapid effect and the dose must be carefully regulated or managed Warfarin, or W-A-R-F-A-R-I-N, which also inhibits clotting but takes longer to start working, is given next. Because warfarin can be taken orally, it's suitable for long-term use. Heparin and warfarin are given together for five to seven days until blood tests show that the warfarin is effectively preventing clotting. The duration of anticoagulation treatment depends on the patient's situation. If pulmonary embolism is caused by a temporary predisposing factor such as surgery, treatment continues for two to three months. If the cause is some longer term problem, treatment usually continues for three to six months, but sometimes it must continue indefinitely. While taking warfarin, the person um, Periodically, Dickley has a blood test to determine if the dose needs to be adjusted. People who appear to be in danger of dying of a pulmonary embolus may benefit from two other treatment approaches: uh, thrombolytic therapy and surgery. Thrombolytics drugs that break up the clot, such as uh, streptokinase. Uh, uricanase or tissue plasmogen activator may be helpful. However, these drugs can be given to people who have had surgery in the preceding 10 days, are pregnant, had have had a, a race, recent stroke, or have a propensity to bleeding to bleed uh, excessively. Surgery may be needed to save someone with severe embolism. Pulmonary embolectomy removal of the embolus from the pulmonary artery may be life-saving. If emboli recur despite all preventive treatment or if anticoagulants cause significant bleeding, a filter can be surgically placed in the main vein from the legs and pelvis to the right side of the heart. Clots generally originate in the legs or pelvis and this filter prevents them from being carried into the pulmonary artery. Thanks for listening to this video um, about pulmonary embolism, and I hope to see you in the next video. So, goodbye, and thanks for watching Medicine Boys. See ya.